Hi everyone, Rick here again with another review and build. This will be on the Trumpeter 135th scale Fawn SLT56 uh, German tank transport. Um, first thing you're going to notice is it's a really big box and it says right on the front uh, over 800 parts and they mean it. So let's take a look. So first thing you'll notice when you open the box is once again Trumpeter who's bought one of the best packaging uh, of all models and they were a real, real good thick cardboard on the lid and the uh, box itself. The kit itself uh, is all individually packed. You've got your instructions, all your different parts separated in multiple pieces. So let's take a look at the parts. So in the first little component you're going to have this box which is going to have your fenders, your cab, which is one piece all of the tires and some axles, some rope, and then some uh, different wires and to hoses you're going to need for uh, all the different hydraulics and that for the transfer from the cab to the, or actually the tractor to the trailer, and then your decal set, which there I got a white piece of plastic covering them, but they're real well detailed. You'll see them in a little bit. Then you're going to have the bed of the trailer. Uh, one of the things you're going to notice right off the top is there's some molding holes that need to be filled in. Uh, that would be the only flaw within this. And then you've got these multiple settings for parts that you put on depending on what vehicle you're hauling to keep it from sliding back and forth. And then the main frame to the tractor itself. The nice thing Trumpeter did here is a lot of models will have this in multiple pieces and if you don't glue it just right the part goes together all cockeyed and out of alignment where this one you don't have to worry about that so you're gonna have one of the PE sheets uh, all the details are really nice high quality you can really see uh, how they etched in things such as the placarding on one of the uh, covers here some different grills etc windshield wipers so here are the initial sprue pieces you'll get this is for the cab etc you can see the dash there, there's decals you can put on there to dress up the interior of the uh, cab itself, underside and top, front bumper, different seats, windshield wipers, cutch hatch covers, uh, your doors, and then you have parts here which are for the trailer itself, some of the different support mechanisms that uh, transfer the weight properly. So these two sprue pieces are identical. Uh, Here's the back side of it, which is for the axles and support systems for the trailer. And then here's the front side. It's got a lot of wheels in the back, six axles, so there's lots of parts there. This is going to be your wheel uh, rims that you put the tires on, the front and rear of these parts. Next sprue pieces you're going to see are going to be part for the cab and uh, tractor portion and parts for the trailer. Uh, lots of details once again. Um, as you go through this when you get the kit, some of the parts you're not going to be real happy with the initial look, but uh, not to worry. As you build it, most of the parts that look kind of sloppy, they're covered up anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. Um, and this is all parts for the trailer itself, the underside, etc. So this part you're going to see parts of the axle system, supports, uh, tanks, your uh, axles, etc. Uh, then your Parts of your framing and that supports that all the water pumps, uh, generators, and different winches and that attached to here, along with your other axles. It's a big heavy duty vehicle and it's got big heavy duty axles. And looking at real pictures, everything's pretty accurate. Real good details, yeah, lots of nuts and bolts, different uh, weld lines that you can see on it. Next one's going to be more wheels and uh, axles and supports, hydraulics, etc. for the suspension system. And like I said, there's lots of wheels, so you're going to have lots of rims and those parts that go with that. Once again, real well detailed, pretty heavy duty vehicle, and the parts definitely show that. Last brew piece is going to be the clear stuff. I'm not taking it out of the bag because I don't want to scratch it. Uh, but you've got your front windshield, side windshields, turn signals, reflectors, etc. So going through the instructions, it's 36 pages and you need every single page. Uh, not a whole lot of descriptions as far as the vehicle goes, some models do a lot more and they're just pretty basic. 
uh, lays out all the sprue pieces, all the parts, everything else. And then you start working. You start with the tractor portion of the cab. It works out well. You can assemble all this. Um, right up front, I'll tell you, be careful putting in your front windshield, which is the first thing you do. Um, I've waited till after. Uh, it's a pretty tight fit in the first place, so if you paint it before you put it in, you're going to have to do some work to make sure it fits properly, um, unless you're going to install it before you paint it. That's whatever choice you go. You can see inside the vehicle pretty well, so you definitely want to probably paint it first and then put all the glass in, but it's up to you. Going through all the different components, building the cab. They got a lot of detail inside the cab where the crew sits. Uh, the dash, etc. Steering wheels, all the different components. One of the neat things Trumpeter did, and I'd never even thought of it, and once I saw them do it, I'm doing it on all my models. A lot of European vehicles, uh, especially Germany, they have these hanging steps, and they what they did here is they used a piece of string in between the two, and that makes this, number one, you won't break it, and then it also looks more realistic. So I've transitioned a lot of my models into that. Um, I like their idea how they did that and first time I'd seen it in the model I adopted it. You can go through the interior of the cab all the different uh, pieces that go on. They give you two options with the windshield wipers. You can do the metal ones which look real sharp or plastic ones depending on which way you want to build it. Um, both of them look nice. Uh, metal ones just are a little uh, thinner obviously and uh, more realistic looking. And you get into building the tractor frame, etc. Uh, axles, support systems. It goes together real well. Um, as you're building it, you kind of get scared at times. It looks pretty crude, but then as you put more components on, all the crude parts get covered up. So it, it's not a big deal. It actually turns out a real nice model. Going through and you're only a paid seven and you're still working. Back axle, front axles. Um, going through those components, building them. One of the things the model does is you have the choice with the front two axles to make the tires turn. There's no real way to support them even though they show this part here. That doesn't attach to the wheel. Uh, so they kind of independently float around. I end up gluing mine because unless you're putting it on a diorama, it just isn't impossible to deal with. Continuing on, most of the instructions are pretty clear cut, straightforward. I didn't really come into any big challenges until I had to start hooking up all the hosing. Uh, I'll show you that here in a little bit. Building the cab, continuing on. I waited till after almost the model was complete to glue my cab on only because I didn't want to break all the fenders and delicate components off, but you can glue it now depending on how you want to go about it. One of the things you'll notice is they put these big flaps on and they put the reflector uh, red and white things. That's the original version, the newer versions of this vehicle. Um, which you can see on the picture shows it up on the fender well, uh, or fender well part of the front of the vehicle where you don't have that thing hanging in the front. The model wants you to hang that, but if you're building a newer version camoed, you're going to want to go this way and not put this part on. Going through your pumps, tanks, motor compartment, uh, toolboxes. The vehicle's starting to come together real nice, but you're at page 14. So this right here is going to be your engine compartment area. It's all covered up. You can't see the engine from the top or the bottom, but if you were to do something, that's where it would go. Winches, putting all these cables in. This was a little on the tricky side. you got to hone these holes out a little bit to make it fit in there better, but it's not real difficult. Continue to just add more and more parts, tools, etc. Your uh, pumps, the little motors for the pumps, water coolers for these different uh, winches and that. And going through your different air lines, air tanks, pressures and that. So then you come to what's probably the uh, hair puller part of the model. Uh, the instructions show all these different hoses and that, uh, but as you start looking at the model, it gets kind of challenging. And thank God for the internet, you can do a lot of research and find pictures of it to get an idea of where the parts go. So on the next page has more hoses to attach. They give you the different size you're supposed to put in and how long it's supposed to be. 
Um, definitely take your time here and read it and do some research and you'll slowly work your way through it. After that, you get to start building on the trailer. And there's, once again, lots of repetitive parts. It goes together pretty fast. Uh, the only negative part here is every one of these axles, well, four of the six all independently turn. So, and the way it sits, it's at an angle. So if you set it flat, the wheels immediately want to flare outward. So you probably just want to glue those unless you're doing them on a model and you want to have them bent in a specific direction. But you work your way through all the different parts, your reflectors, and uh, different turning mechanisms. None of it works, but it looks awesome. Working way through, you got some metal axles you have to put in there for support. And then uh, your suspension systems that go in. Going through all the wheels, you put on the, uh, they have you putting on the rims, and then you put the tires on after it. Building the tongue that goes from the flat part of the trailer over to the tractor hitch. Different pulley mechanisms depending on how they want to pull the, uh, whatever they're towing onto the trailer. Uh, when you get to this point, this goes together pretty good, but this is definitely going to be a stick glue and hold for a little bit to make it a perfect alignment, because if you don't, it'll be all off-center and you'll be unhappy with your results. Finishing up the parts. Um, here's the only part really you want to put together after you paint it, because you want to put these tires inside and this metal part goes in the front. There's no way to do then. There's no way to cover these and paint it, so do all this part uh, as far as the cover here and the tires after you paint the vehicle in. Going through uh, support boxes. Some of the parts here are glued together, glued on with PE parts and that's how they hang. It looks awesome when it's done but you know, a little bit of hair pulling getting it on just right. These are the parts I was talking about. Depending on what vehicle you may want to put on it, you put these at a different width apart and that's what they're for. Um, you're going to put a tank, some of the uh, wider axles you may want it on the outside or a narrower vehicle, however you want, it's up to you. And then different tow bars, different components here for your ramp setup. You can make these ramps work if you want, I didn't, um, but if you want to make them functional, uh, there's pretty simple ways to go about that. just takes a little bit more time and uh, effort, but you can make that happen. And you get to the final part, getting the last little pieces together. And then they show you if you want it down, how the parts go on. And you get pretty much to the painting part here. And so let's take a look at the model. So the kit itself, it's a big model. It comes together really nice. Looks sharp when it's finished. You can kind of see all the different details you go about. This is what I was talking about. As you're building these components in here, underneath all this, it looks pretty rough. But once you glue all the fancy details on the outside, it comes together nicely. And like I said, you got all these little hoses you have to install, chains, uh, tow cables, etc., uh, exhaust systems, main exhaust pipe, uh, lighting, some uh, cargo supply areas up there. Reflectors, fuel tanks, uh, spare fuel tanks, air pumps, uh, air tanks, all the undercarriage, tow lines, etc. If you're going to put a model on it, these components right here would actually unlatch there, and this attaches to the front uh, hooks of the vehicle, and that's how they attach it in the front, and then they chain the rest of it down. These are the different... Uh, tie downs depending on how you want to do it and you get back toward the rear the ramps the uh, beacons that they have so taking a look at just the tractor uh, when I got this kit yeah I got it off of eBay and um, the guy had purchased these grills and in my assembly I accidentally broke the front windshield which you can see the crack right there um, so I ended up putting the grills on and it came out real nice looks sharp uh, kind of get an idea of the uh, headlights and the different detail levels and that. Uh, looking inside, you kind of get an idea if I can get it to focus right. With the grill it's almost impossible to get through there. Um, but all the details inside. 
you got your uh, main intake valve for the engine and then here and then here's going to be your exhaust for the engine itself the different two winches they have etc the uh, hitch and all that that goes there underside of the vehicle pretty well detailed um, lots of different axles drive shafts etc uh, that all comes together real nice and taking a look at the other side you've got your spare tire uh, pretty much all the same stuff on this side as the other side there are some aftermarket products which um, have a lot of metal parts um, these parts look nice so I didn't really want to go that route you can if you want I you get a little bit fancier look but it's I don't think it'll make such a big difference so taking a look at the trailer itself you have your another tool rack here different pulley systems your rods here to uh, support the vehicle when towing supply boxes all the wheels reflectors along the side and then you've got your ramps in the back Any an idea they've got a cable here which ties up and then the different ramp devices the rear of the uh, trailer you see your placard for the unit it belongs to the uh, reflectorized warning beacons the follow me beacon the license plate turn signals uh, chalk here for chalking the tires another pulley system in the back depending on how they're trying to winch a vehicle up and then uh, your other side turn signals and brake light you get on this side once again you're going to see a, a weight placard and then working your way through all the tires the wheels the axles and then your spare tire here the underside of the trailer is pretty well detailed um, the kit itself doesn't really have any brake lines I'm haven't seen any pictures to show how they really are but uh, those don't have some of the other kits out there of different uh, like the American tank collar has a lot of brake lines you would put in a little bit different and you got your little foot here that pops down so that when you drive the vehicle up on the trailer doesn't tip up that does not move but you can easily make it to where it moves if you're gonna make the kit workable so when it comes to painting the vehicle what I do is I initially use the uh, Tamiya surface primer. I like this uh, rust color one here. It works so well because when you paint, if you miss a spot, you're going to see this rust underneath, which is kind of a neat look. For the main vehicle itself, I uh, then painted with the Tamiya acrylic NATO green, the whole vehicle, followed up with the NATO brand, brown for the, the brown parts and then the NATO black for the black parts. What I did do a little differently is, is on all my trucks and vehicles, on the undersides of them, I paint using the Model Master medium green. And look at all the pictures I've seen, uh, this looks a little better. This is an enamel. The neat thing about that is it gives a hint of the glossy you get with an enamel color. And that, for me, better matches. I paint all my kits with uh, my Iwata HPCS airbrush. I use about 20 to 24 PSI, it works out real well. You can get real good detail. And then what I do is, as I paint, um, I hand paint using the airbrush, getting all the details, and trying to get as close as possible with the lower PSI to get a nice crisp line. With the Germans especially, their vehicles are painted with a computer, so the lines are a lot crisper, and you can do that with masking tape or the clay. Uh, different items like that. I don't do that. I just I'm happy with the effect I get although the other does look a lot more realistic um, Followed up by putting all your decals on what I do is I use a uh, clear gloss Where the decals are going to stick put that on and then follow up after the decals cured with a uh, flat clear to Glue the decal inside and protect it from wear and tear so overall Here's your completed vehicle. I put a uh, Borders Leopard I completed a while back on the back uh, just to kind of finish the look. It comes out amazing. It's an awesome kit. Um, definitely is going to take you a little bit of time to build, but it's well worth it when you get the finished results. I have one more to build, and I'm looking forward to that kit. This is definitely not a weekend kit. It's going to take you quite a while and do it in phases. Uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me.
Please like the video and subscribe. Take care and be safe out there. Bye-bye.